Hi everyone, thank you for watching this designer workshop. I'm Janine, a 3D designer at Zero Virtual Fashion based in Munich. Today I would like to present the different map options you have in a workflow in Clo. I would like to guide you through each map by using these different caps here. So please feel free to ask questions in the live chat and we will try to answer all the questions via the chat. The first map we're going to look at it is the texture map. In other 3D softwares, this map can be also called diffuse or color map. This map defines the main color, as you can see here in that example, of the surface of the fabric. For creating a good texture map, there should be no direct light. For example, there shouldn't be like a spotlight directly on your fabric. So the lighting needs to be diffused. Otherwise, you might need to compromise the uniformity of the colors. There should be also a good balance between the darkness as well as um, the lightness. If that's not given, then you might need to compensate this with additional maps and that could lead to a lower quality of the final result. Now let's take a look where to place the texture in Clo. In order to place my first texture, I have to go to the property editor. In order to do that, I just simply select first my fabric for my first cap and then I can see the texture tab here. I have two options. The first option would be going through my library to search for the right texture or I just simply drag and drop my texture in this tab here. And then you can see immediately how it looks like. So this is actually the most important map because this gives you a good idea of the look of your fabric. Then in order to make it more realistic, this is the moment where the other maps come into play. Okay, let's jump to the next map, which is the normal map. Here I have a normal denim map, and this is actually the most important map after the texture map. It is also called a bump map in other 3D softwares. This map will allow you to generate a subtle surface, like details, for instance, wrinkles, waves of the fabric, scratches, so without touching actually the mesh of the garment itself. In most cases, this map is purple, as you can see here. Now let's check out what kind of effect the normal map has on our fabric. First of all, I will show you how the normal map looks on its own by using a blank fabric, like this one here, for example. The way how I will apply the normal map works the same as I did with the texture. So I'm going to simply select the fabric and below the texture tab I have a normal map tab here. I can either search through the library or I can simply drag and drop my normal map here. Of course in the 3D window you can see that the purple color won't be shown because the normal map keeps the information where the structure of the fabric has some depth which means that it has an embossing look here, which brings the illusion of a depth. When I'm going to put, for instance, a number which is minus something, let's do minus 20, you will see that now the selection is inverted. One thing you should take into consideration is that this map is just an illusion. It does not change the geometry of the mesh, which we will later look on the displacement map. I can also see when I have a look from the size that it doesn't have a, a geometry. It's actually flat and smooth. So I need to keep in mind to have a right perspective in terms of seeing my depth in the best way. Yes, so this map is quite uh, helpful and very usual and convenient to use. The next map I'm going to demonstrate is the roughness map. This map is also made of grayscale values with white, black and gray sections, as you can see here in my example. 
Through this map, you will be able to control the light information, making your fabric look more reflective or less reflective. The darker tones will indicate that the material is going to be completely reflective, like a mirror, whereas the lighter color tones will indicate no reflection at all. In Chloe, you have the options also to change the roughness intensity or using a roughness map as well. I will show you how you can apply this roughness map here. First of all, while we choose the right fabric, it is now in a metal type. We choose that because we wanted to have a more pleasing look for the caps we had before. But to explain that in a more clear way, we're going to change this to a fabric type mat. The metal type would give us additional reflection, which we don't like to have. Now let's take the roughness map here, going to apply this, but I have to switch to the map. Then I can drag and drop my map in this section here. And you might not see as much, but if I'm just going to change it to a more angle with the light reflection, you can see the reflection on the surface. But in order to make it a bit more visible, I'm just going to change this to a darker color just to give it a more of a contrast. Of course, I can also change the map intensity and the lower value allows light to be reflected in smaller areas so it actually looks highly reflective and larger values allows light to be reflected in the whole object so it looks more rough. As well, I can change the reflection intensity, which actually increases the amount of reflection. And together with the roughness map, the roughness map spreads the reflected light. So you can just play around with these two functionalities. Additionally to that, I would like to show that you can also invert your selection. As you know, the white parts are going to be non-reflective and the dark parts are going to be reflective. In some other 3D softwares, it's actually the other way around. In order to have it smoothly done in Clone, you can just simply invert your selection without changing the map in another 3D software. So here you can just invert your selection and you can see that Everything which is white is going to be reflective and everything which is black is going to be non-reflective. So this is the easy way how you can change the map. Now I would like to present the displacement map. This map is also called the height map in other 3D softwares. This map physically displaces and tessellates the mesh of a 3D garment or fabric to which it is applied. It can bring an illusion of depth of the fabric and the displacement map is made of grayscale values as you can see here. So in this example for instance the darker color tone are going to represent the bottom of the fabric and the lighter color tones will represent the highest peak. One thing you need to consider is that once you apply that and you like to see that you have to open the render engine and it takes a little bit of time to see the result because it actually needs to calculate the displaced and tessellated geometry of the mesh. I will show you how that works. So first of all I need to search for the right fabric. I need to search for the displacement map tab which is here so it's below the texture normal map tab. I can do it the same way as before going through the library or I just simply drag and drop. All right now as you can see it is applied but I cannot see anything in the 3D window here. This is because it needs to be open in a 3D render engine in order to see the displacement. I will do this now and I will just refresh the interactive render and nothing will happen. Why? Because the depth 
like the highest peaks I like to have, like the white colors, is zero for the moment. So if I would put a extreme number now, let's say 10, you see how it will change accordingly. But then you, it's kind of like interacting with each other, like the texture. If I like to have it yeah, more realistic, I would need to change it slightly and then you can see the texture. I mean, I can also put it a little bit higher to see it even more. Yes, so this is the displacement map. I will just show another example. Just going to drag and drop this here. It will always start from zero, so I have to change that. I can do another 10 to see how it looks like. And also from the side, you will see that you have a structure. If I'm now going back to a lower value, then you can also see it in that way. Let's jump to the next map, which is the opacity map. It is also called a alpha map in other 3D software. It's like a texture mapping to define the degree of transparency, translucency of areas in a given object. So as you can see here, it is like a grayscale image. So the image actually tells you which part of the texture is going to be transparent or opaque. Now I would like to show how we can upload an opacity map in our alpha channel. So for instance, we can either use a JPEG or a PNG. I will start with a JPEG and I need to drag and drop this image to my opacity tab here. So it's below the displacement map tab. So I'm just simply drag and drop or I would just go through the library function. And you can see here that now Everything which is black is going to be fully transparent and everything which is white is going to be opaque. Now let's try another one by using the PNG with the alpha channel. I'm just doing the same way, going to drag and drop it here. But as you can see, it doesn't look as nice as I should be. So I will need to use the alpha channel for that. So I will just simply change the mode and then I can see this here as well. Okay, let's take a look at the metalness and the metalness map in Glow. When an incoming light wave hits the surface, the wave is partially reflected and all the refracted light is observed. So that means that the color tint of metals comes from the reflected light, so in our maps. So that actually means that we don't give metals a diffuse color. I will demonstrate this on a basis level here just by using the metal mess. I'm just going to show you that now we support PBR materials in the 3D window as well as in the render. So I'm just going to open it that you can see the 3D render and I'm just going to close the library to have a little bit more space. Now I'm going to scroll down and I was just going to push the ruler a little bit more up and you can see in the 3D window how it becomes more reflective. Just going to use the interactive render to see the result. And now you can see we have a very reflective or like a nice metal effect here. Okay, what else can I do? It is the use of the metalness map. By that, I will just simply use this map here and I will drag and drop this in this tab. Now let's take a look in the render engine. As you can see here that the white section has a high value of reflection, whereas the black section has a low value of reflection. What else you can do or you can take into consideration, you could also change the fabric type into metal, but you have to take into account that it will affect the whole surface of the fabric. And 
And I'm just going to demonstrate this a little more in the render engine. And you can see that it has even more a higher reflection in the white parts. So the metal effect which we have here is going to superimpose our metalness map. So I'm just going to keep it as fabric matte type and I'm just going to go back and change the intensity. One thing you can do as well, you have the ability to change the metalness map in the width and the height, so the scaling. You can do it by typing any measurements you like to have, or you can also change this. Now we're getting to our last cap and I will present a combination of different maps. First of all, I will use the texture map, which is, as I mentioned earlier, one of the most important maps because it actually gives you a good impression on how your design is going to look like. But to have a more realistic outlook, it is very beneficial to use the normal map. So I'm simply going to drag and drop. Like both together, makes the surface more realistic because the normal map makes the surface of the object a little bit more bumpy or it gives you a little more of a roughness. can also increase a little bit the normal map. Another beneficial map is the roughness map. I'm just going to drag and drop this map here. It is going to be by default 50. I can for sure make it a little bit higher like the intensity of the applied map and it's also like a grayscale image which means that the white sections is going to be non-reflected whereas the black section is going to be reflective. To have a more reflection in here I need to increase the intensity and you can see that in those parts here it has the higher reflection as well as you can see it in the render engine. So in this case, you can decide how much reflection you would like to apply. Now we get to our last map, which is the displacement map. And this map will give you a little bit of a bumpiness. Now I'm going to simply drag and drop this here as well. And it is also a grayscale. And you can see that Everything is what is going to be dark is on the bottom of the fabric and the Clo logo will have a, the highest peak. So let's have a look in here. It doesn't change much as I have to apply a mount and now you can see the little bumpiness of this Clo logo. I can also make it a little bit more extreme if I like to or I will keep it a little bit more flat. There we go. Okay, thank you very much. Now you have seen different options of the maps you can use in Clo. I hope you enjoyed this designer workshop and I wish you a good user summit. Thank you very much.